Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Royal Sussex Live. Welcome one and all. Okay. Oh, uh, by the way, you all, hmm. let me move this over here. Um, now nah, I'll save it for tomorrow. <laughs> I'll save it for tomorrow. Let me see who was here first. Emerald Derek, thank you so much for being here first. There are no prizes, but thank you very much. I really, really do appreciate it. And Sharon Chung, Rositas, uh, Sonia Johnson, hello and welcome. Oh, my goodness. There's uh, some college student that's missing in Missouri. And um, wow, that's very sad. They haven't found him yet. Huh. <clears throat> oh, well. I hope they find them. They uh, have been flooding the news with it as well they should, you know, for all of the people that um, disappear like that mysteriously. Very sad. Uh, let's see. Sonia Johnson. Oh, Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> and TB, TB, Helen Marmon. And let's see. Sisitao? Is it Sisitao or Sisitao? Sisitao. Uh, Carlene Beckford, Lizzie34, Carol Lunn, Black Queen. And I'm sure I saw Lydia Washington here earlier. And Connie Balmer! Hey, Connie Balmer! Connie Balmer! Connie Balmer! Uh, Church Nelly is here. Church Nelly, somebody asked about you earlier. Oh, my goodness. Your name was being thrown about in mixed company. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Uh, Elaine Parker, hello. Uh, let's see. Anastasia is here. Yulibi. Yep. Church Nelly, somebody was talking about you. Okay. Well, I say the rest, uh, say, you know, greet everybody else as we go along. But let me get into it, okay? Um, so Harry's uh, Diana Award, uh, Megan's uh, brand, of course. William and Kate are failing. <clears throat> I tell you, it's incredible how how weird things are for them right now. And uh, let's see, where what else? Um, oh, and uh, and more. <laughs> That's it, and more. Hey, Novi D. So, you all recognize this young lady? Does anybody recognize this young lady? Because I, fin I spent five hours with a couple of friends of hers. Well, okay, I wasn't there for the whole five hours. But you all won't believe who was around some time ago in a live chat. I give you a clue, but I don't think I need to. <laughs> yes, yes, Lizzie. Yeah, I didn't want to say her name yesterday, but um, but because she uh, she and um, Michelle. She and Michelle were together, so it was like a a real, real, um, you know, podcast like we used to have. It was like it was Sunday morning on a Friday afternoon. But yeah, they were on for five hours, Tina and Michelle. Can you believe it? And they mentioned Church Nelly because uh, somebody said, who is that that used to be, uh, sit in church watching um, Tina and Michelle? And uh, they had mentioned someone else, and I'm just, I'm, I was almost screaming. I'm like, Church Nelly, Church Nelly. And then somebody said, That was Church Nelly. I think it was Church Nelly. And yep, sure enough, that's exactly who they were trying to remember. But um, wow, what a, you know, guys, 
I hate to tell you this, but I was ready about three hours ago, but I was like stuck listening and I couldn't tear myself away. So I needed to run an errand before I started because by the time I finished today, it'd be too late. But yeah, I wanted to go on this afternoon, but I was captivated listening to um, the dynamic duo, the architects, uh, Tina and Michelle. So just want you guys to know they are doing very, very well. And they miss the old gang. And um, we don't know when we'll hear from them again. So don't get too excited. But we don't know when we'll hear from them again. But um, uh, let's see. And I heard a few other familiar voices. Um, so, but the good thing is that if you're lucky, if you're lucky, they may pop up soon on somebody else's uh, channel. So. Like, for instance, V.S., who was also there. Uh, maybe V.S. would um, host them or something like that. So we'll see. We'll see. But, yeah, if, if I hear where they'll be, I'll let you all know. Or V.S. will let you know. But um, what a fun afternoon it was. So, yeah, I was just stuck. I couldn't tear myself away from it. And I had to take a phone call and handle some business and, and I came back and I was like, oh, they're still on. So, yeah, it, it was quite a, a nice uh, visit. We had a really, really nice visit. So, anyway, <laughs> I knew if I put that picture up, you all would know exactly who I was talking about. So, uh, unfortunately, if you all missed it, uh, they, they'll be back. And, yes, uh, BS is right sooner than later. So, but it was like a it was like a, a a reunion almost. Yep, voices we ain't heard in ages. So um, <clears throat> there's Harry, looking tan and fit and handsome and and um, living his best life. Oh yes, uh, VS says uh, it was recorded and on the Sussex Squad podcast. So on a app formerly known as, yes. So if you have access to um, the app formerly known as Twitter, then I don't know how to tell you to get to it, but um, let's see. Yeah, you just go to Sussex Squad Podcast on, on Twitter and um, maybe you could access it like that. But the whole five hours is there, so. Very, very entertaining. And Michelle was still cussing like a sailor. And then she did that thing I love that she does um, <clears throat> when she's, she's, it's like mocking someone. <laughs> I'd never mind because every time I try to fix my mouth to do it, I start laughing. So I can't, can't do it. But it is funny when she does that. And she, she did not disappoint. She did that, and she dropped a few F-bombs. So I was like, yep, just like old times. Um, but no, Tina didn't cuss anybody out. Tina didn't have to cuss anybody out. But there was just so much love. Um, people, you know, thanking and, and praising Tina and Michelle for everything that they've done for us. And, and rightly so. I mean, uh, they... Especially Tina, she, I believe she got the worst of it, but uh, some of the derangers were being very, very abusive. And <clears throat> so when you're like, oh, how come he won't just say the name? He won't just say the name. It's just because I'm so sensitive to what she's been through. And I don't want to just throw it around there like that. But, you know, but since she was nice enough to to spend some time with the squad like that, I figured it's okay because, um, you know, maybe we'll be hearing more from her. But uh, for those of you that don't know, it was a pretty scary time. And there have been a lot of people who have defended the Sussexes that have been doxxed or uh, harassed in some way by the derangers. And so... Well, you know, we all have to be careful, people that are the content creators and people that have gone that extra mile, uh, people who have engaged the enemy 
on the um, social media, you have to be very careful. <clears throat> so, but uh, yes, it was it was great. So, uh, okay, let me take that away. And so this is what I was getting to. Uh, we celebrate. The amazing work of individuals and organizations who change lives through sports. Sounds a lot like Invictus, doesn't it? Watch the Sport Gives Back Award on Sunday, March the 24th on ITV. Which brings me to Harry. With over a week to go until Sports Gives Back. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I wanted to cut my phone off before it gets started. Uh, with over a week to go until Sport Gives Back uh, is broadcast on ITV, we want to give you some more sneak peeks as to what to expect. Uh, each of our eight charities has created a video about their winner. And one of the VT, yeah, one VT had a very special guest. Uh, check out Prince Harry talking about where we're Invictus winner Josh, is it Bogey? Boggy, Bogey, uh, with the definite twinkle in his eye. Um, yeah, and that's the link right there. Oh, sorry, I didn't stretch that link out, but uh, the clip was a total surprise to Josh and caused real excitement in the room. It was even featured on Sky News that evening. We'll be sharing all winner videos next over the next uh, week before. Uh, the broadcast on March 24th, so keep your eyes peeled. Uh, I got to try that link. I don't know if that's how you get to it, but uh, give uh, Sports Gives Awards probably it's fun. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so there you go. Uh, Harry is going to be doing something with him, so I guess he's going to be on ITV, I guess. Uh, let me check it out, you guys. I mean, since I brought it up, let me check it out. Uh, sports. Yes, it is. Sports gives back. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I'm going to try that link and see where it does. So there was one, two, three. Okay. Oh, yes, it is. But I, I kind of think we've seen this one before. Okay, I'll put the link on the community tab. I kind of think we've seen this before, but maybe not. Maybe not. But I, I'll put it on the community tab later. All right, let me get back over here. And Black Queen says, uh, Barantina had a miscarriage as well because of all of the vile harassment she received from the derangers and gutter rats. Yes, not only the derangers, but actually there were um, a few squatties. At least we thought they were squatties, but, oh, it's a long story. But there were, there were a few people in the squad. And, you know, guys, um, there are some people that have been on Twitter and they left Twitter because some of the squatties could be just as bad as some of the um, derangers. Trust me when I say this, and there have been some falling outs like you wouldn't believe. So Twitter is not for everyone, especially if you are, you know, outspoken in any way because, you know, people just you take a group of people and surely somebody's not going to see eye to eye. And sometimes I'm uh, embarrassed and a bit ashamed of of how people go at one another on the Twitter. But for the most part, you know, everybody gets along and it's a big happy family. But because of the thing uh, with the genocide in Gaza, there had been, you know, some bad blood between this side and that side. And I am not going to go into all of it, but that was very disappointing. So that is one of the reasons why, um, you know, Tina had to take a step back because she really, really took a lot of punishment um, for her outspokenness and, and all of the work she's done, especially with fundraising um, and uh, pretty much just bet between uh, Tina and Michelle, 
a lot of other people, other content creators as well. But it was like it was a it was a plan. We were able to establish a plan to deal with the derangers, to deal with the tabloid media. And at the time, it was very important because there were a lot of people who were very frustrated because, you know, everybody's seeing the same thing, that Megan is being viciously attacked week after week after week, day after day, by this tabloid media. And I tell you, it, it was a, a rescue line for a lot of people that there was a place to go. And so finding uh, Tina and Michelle on a Sunday morning was a way to just kind of decompress from all of the, the vitriol that was being experienced every day. And there were a lot of people who were saying today, they were saying, you know, to Tina and Michelle, you know, thank God for you. Cause sometimes I was so upset. I didn't know where to go. didn't know where to turn. And then I found the Sussex squad and, and Tina and Michelle. So it was a, a huge, huge asset at the time because there were no daily content creators and the few places that there were to go, it, um, you know, it, it wasn't always available or, you know, you may not be able to catch this one or that one. So yeah, it was uh, it was a, it was a very dark time, but we got through it. And Harry and Megan are away from all of that nonsense, and they are thriving. And the people back in Narnia, well, <laughs> we know how they're doing right now. So thank you so much, Black Queen. Um, let's see. Just got a PayPal. Yes, I did. Thank you so much for the PayPal. Uh, oh, let me see if I could read that one. Okay, so I won't say the name, but uh, let me see if I can open up the message. Hmm. Okay. Okay, unfortunately, I'm not able to open it right now, I think. But thank you so much. Uh, let me see. MLT, thank you very much. But I will read it later. Thank you so much for the PayPal. And thank you for watching, Royal Sussex. And thank you, Elaine Parker, for the super sticker. And as always, and thank you for staying up late with us tonight. Thank you for staying up late with us. Uh, Twitter is successful. Yes, it is. It, it, it's very brutal. It can be very, very brutal. Uh, there's no kidding about that. Um, I don't do a lot of talking. <laughs> I mostly listen. Occasionally I will speak. And that is very rare because I don't want to, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> But some of the misunderstandings, I'm like, seriously? Uh, so, yeah, like I say, you get enough people together and anything could happen. All right, so Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's surprise NAACP Archwell Foundation Award recipient. Y'all got me good, as she said in the video, y'all got me good. So I did make a video, and since we got over 4,000 views, almost like 6,000, I'm not going to play it here because I will not qualify that as being, it, it, it's above the food truck video status. So since we have cleared a certain uh, bar, I'll just mention it and not show you the video. But I had fun making it, though. Had fun making it. And congratulations to her. Oh, by the way, you all, did I? Okay, I, I shared the link on Twitter, but I don't think I shared it on, you know what? Let me do that now. You all, I haven't watched it myself, but um, the, the winner of the award, um, 
she was on stage for like an hour at the South by Southwest. And she has a dynamic personality. And no, I did not share it. So you know what? I'm going to do that right now because I'm just afraid I will forget. So let me go ahead and put that on the community tab before I forget. But yeah, she was she was really good. And I can't wait to watch it. I cannot wait to watch it. She is, she's like got this huge personality and she knows how to work the stage. So uh, do I have it? Do I have it? I don't know what I did with that. I don't have it here either. You know what? I'm going to have to find it. Just trust me on this one. I will find it. I will share it. It is. On, there it is right there. I got it. I got it. Never mind. I got it. Okay. So Dr. Joy Balawami. Uh, uh, Balawam, uh, yes. Balawam, that lovely lady. I am going to put it there. I'm going to say, watch this. Yes, watch this. Keep it simple. There you go. So, yes, she has an hour on stage at the South by Southwest. And from what I see, she was really, really good. And, of course, she's talking about the uh, bias or racism bias in the uh, AI community. So, okay, I got it. All right. And I know some of you all thought I was going to come on again later yesterday, but I did not because I had noticed that um, that Ann was on and I didn't want to go on much later and I didn't want to come on at the same time. So I just said, I'll wait till tomorrow. But um, yeah, and when I looked, I was like, oh, she's on. So I decided to just wait. Okay. All right. I got that. Thank you for your patience, everyone. I am done fooling with all this stuff. And again, that video is on the community tab. So watch it at your leisure. It's about an hour long. But from what I can see, it is pretty good. Hey, big mama. So there again, this is also... Uh, Oh, yeah, please make sure you all go on the Sussex.com. That is where you can find Archwell, um, well, their Archwell page. But there's the Sussex.com, but you could also access the, Ar you know, the Archwell Foundation. So the two pages, you can link one from the other. So remember, we want to keep that traffic going through that page because... We want Harry and Megan to know how much we appreciate it. And in the past month, they have been posting, you know, ever since the newly revamped new page was put up, they have been posting like crazy. Unlike before where, you know, we wouldn't get anything new on there for like a month, two months. They've been posting like, what, once or twice a week now? So to show our appreciation, the least we could do is just go on there, look through a few things. Maybe you'll catch an update before anybody else. But either way, uh, we want them to know how much we appreciate the page. And speaking of appreciated, uh, SM, thank you for the cash app. And thank you so much for watching Royal Sussex. All right. Um. Oh, here. So it says the Archwell Foundation is proud to congratulate this year's recipient of the NAACP Archwell Foundation Digital Civil Rights Award, Dr. Joy Balam Wimmy. Oh, that was Winnie. Balam Wimmy. Winnie. Not me, me. Uh, Balam Winnie. Uh, Dr. Joy is a computer scientist, digital activist, and founder of the Algorithmic. Justice League. The algorithmic, <clears throat> one more time, the Algorithmic Justice League, uh, an organization 
leading the way to overcome racist and sexist bias in artificial intelligence system. In her book, Unmasking AI, she examines the social implications of technology and discusses the movement to prevent AI harm as the recipient of, the, of this award, she will receive a grant of $100,000 to advance her work in supporting equity and accountability in AI. Um, launched in 2022, this annual award uplifts a new generation of leaders who are creating transformational change and working to advance civil rights through the online world. So as I mentioned yesterday, in the online community, well, in the AI, in the all over software AI, all over electronics, you'll find that it's mostly men. And the majority of them are either white men or Asian men. There are very few um, African Americans or blacks of wherever, it's very few of them there. And so when they are setting up this stuff, they don't have people of color, especially if you have a dark complexion, they don't have you in mind. She literally was setting, uh, set, sitting, that is, looking into a camera at facial recognition software, an application for the software and it would not recognize her face. And she literally just took, like you ever see at the craft store how they have the mask and it's like plain white and you could paint it any way you like. Um, you could create a Mardi Gras mask or something like that. You could do whatever you want to. Um, put little rhinestones or whatever on it, bead it, beads or feathers. Well, she just took a plain white mask and put it up to her face. And then all of a sudden, this thing started trying to read the details of her face. It's almost as though she didn't exist because this machine would not recognize her. So there's a lot that needs to be done. And this is why representation matters. So thank God for her. But we need more of her in that world. Uh, let's see. Terry Carver says, Megan is the most popular royal of all time. Absolutely. Thank you very much for the super chat. And I do believe that she is the most popular royal. She is. She is the most popular. Um, and her legacy with that institution has yet to be decided, but it is going to be a very rich legacy. But thing is, it's not going to be just for that institution because there are a lot of lists. There are a lot of uh, schools and libraries where you will find the Duchess of Sussex, uh, like especially when it's African American History Month here in the U.S., they mentioned the Duchess of Sussex. So, um, yeah, we couldn't even possibly imagine what her legacy is going to be like in the next 40, 50 years or whatever. But it's going to be a huge contribution. That much I know. So thank you so much for that. And TCC Sun says, I entered my first spoutable pod, Like Spaces, and it was wonderful. I was told they have it on Wednesday and Friday nights. Please consider joining Spoutable, Christopher Bosey. Uh, is not the bird. Yeah, the spoutable symbol is what the the whale, I think. And it has a spout. Get it? Spoutable? <clears throat> well, anyway, TCC Sun, I tried to get into that and I couldn't get in. I ended up going back on Twitter because somebody put a group for people who had trouble getting into the spoutable. Now, I don't know if I did something wrong, but I intended to be there. And I saw like a chat, but I didn't get any sound. And I'm just like, okay, I thought people would be talking. But <clears throat> Spoutable is new. And they don't have nearly as much infrastructure in place, um, 
as say the the bird. So it's going to take a while to get there, but that's a good thing when people can't get in because that means that the demand is high. So can't look at it in the negative way. That just means that the demand is high. And um, TCC Sun, uh, did you invest in the Spoutable? Um, <laughs> I did. Uh, they have a, well, I think that that is ended. Uh, was it today or yesterday? But you could invest like a small amount to the future of Spoutable. And it's a way to support that platform. And who knows if it becomes the next Twitter. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> as much as I love you guys, you might turn on one day and be like, where's Baron? But uh, <laughs> I doubt if that'll happen. But uh, yeah, it's a great way to support um, an up and coming uh, thing like that because Trust me, we need an alternative to the bird and all of these platforms because they kind of, um, it's just not enough um, competition out there, right? It's not enough competition. There's only a handful of really big platforms. And of course, as I was saying, we need more black people in those spaces. So thank you, TCC Sun. And thank you for that plug for Spoutable. You know, I didn't think about that, but I'm going to have to do something that will be a link. So I will try to work on something I could put on a community tab just so that people are aware that it is available and you don't have all of the noise that you get on the uh, Twitter. Because one of the bad things about Twitter is that the derangers will come after you and you're in a good mood and all of a sudden... There's all kind of things in the uh, thread or, you know, post it to you, however the language is for that. And it's just designed to demoralize you and make you, you know, your great day awful and all that kind of stuff. They try to really get into your head. So, yes, um, Twitter can be very, very cruel. So thank you again. And continuing let me see here okay um 34 minutes and i'm on slide seven i better step it up huh okay again that is the winner dr joy and uh i'm in, oh this is her words i'm incredibly humble and honored to join such an illustrious group of recipe uh, uh of people <laughs> for the Digital Civil Rights Award for the NAACP. And the Archwell Foundation said Dr. Joy Balam Winnie, uh, with their rapid uh, proliferation of AI, it is more crucial than ever to ensure that these algorithms acting as gatekeepers serve us all, serve us all. Remember, it matters. It matters. Uh, and do not impede the, on the civil rights of marginalized communities. This award will help the algorithm. Uh, I'm sorry, algor al the algorithmic, <laughs> wait, algorithmic justice league continue our work to prevent AI harm, connect the uh, excoded uh, to resources and raise awareness about AI's impact on society through our advocacy, art, and research. Now that was a mouthful. Check it out. So um, I'm going to bring this down so you can see her face. Amelia E. Noez. She's the one that makes these, I'm going to say they're watercolors. But yeah, she's the artist that has made quite a few of these watercolors. So sometimes after an event, when you see Megan wearing an outfit that, um, you know, instantly becomes iconic because Megan wore it. Like, for instance, the, um, the big ball skirt that she wore to Jamaica 
she wore that in the video, that little sneak peek that we got to her, um, you know, to her um, luxury, well, her brand sneak peek. Is that what we're calling it? Soft, soft launch? Yes, to the soft launch of her brand. And um, yeah, so she made a watercolor out of it. And if you go to Instagram, you can see some more of her work. Now, she's not a squatty, and she's not a deranger. She's an artist. And um, so she's not taking any sides or anything like that. But there's a whole bunch of stuff that she's got with Megan and Harry and other members of the family and just people from pop culture, just so you know. So you can find her on Instagram at Amelia E. Noes. So check her out. I know I should have warned you. Um, let's see. How many people do we have on Instagram now? Let me take a look. It'll be really fast. It'll be really fast. Okay. Uh, there is 439,000 people that have subscribed, well, that follow Megan on Instagram. Now, <clears throat> I was expecting it to be a million already, but it's not. It's 439,000. Well, I mean, I'm a little disappointed. I wanted it to be a million by now, but still without any updates. Well, there's no updates. There's just the one thing. And so I think still that's very respectable. I mean, there's a lot of people, a lot of businesses and such that has been on Instagram that don't have 439,000. So we'll get there. We will get there. I think one of the problems is that there's a lot of people that are skeptical about it who were not sure that it actually belongs to Megan. And I understand that because I wasn't sure. And so I did not use my usual email. I used one of my obscure emails because I wasn't sure. I was just like, ugh. You, uh, y'all not going to get me. So, um, oh, sorry about that. I just muted myself. But yeah, I think over time, it'll be just, um, it's just that people were not sure. Now, I think it was, who was that was just saying you had to report someone? Um, was it Dan Wooten? <laughs> That's what I meant to show you, is that Dan Wooten, of all people, have signed up. Chris Jenner uh, has signed up. But Dan Wooten, do we really want him? Um, but trust me, there's a lot of people that have signed up and because they want uh, to be aware of what Megan is doing. So no surprise with that. Now, let me get this monster off of here. Oh, we want you back, Prince Harry. Told to return to UK by heartbroken royal fans. Harry, even some of the body language experts, you know how they usually try to find every reason under the sun to be hypercritical. All of them were unanimous in how animated, how excited, how uh, comfortable, relaxed, um, just how, how great Harry was. 
And it was very noticeable that Harry was far more interesting for the people that was there. Now, one of the things that got on my nerves is that they were making this comparison in the first place. It does not matter because last time William was the one on video and Harry was the one that went to the event because the event took place in um, in California, right? So why is it they're making such a big deal out of it now that William is the one who showed up because the event took place in London and Harry was the one that was on by video. I think the award is every two years, but they made the biggest funk out of the fact that Harry came on only after William left the building. I don't even know if that's true. That is only what the um, what the, the tabloids are saying. The truth may be something totally different, but they had to keep saying that in a way that made it seem like Harry was the one being petty. They kept saying, oh, Harry's not going to make his appearance until after William has left the building. How would he know one way or the other? How would he know the difference? And I think there was a little shade there, too, because William seemed to stay. Either he came to the event much later or he just stayed far too long. But whatever the case may be, um, William was stiff, was stiff, boring, and people did not connect that well to him. So Harry, they were noticeably, I won't even say they were excited, they were giddy. Those kids were giddy, bubbly. They were, they were very animated when Harry appeared. With William, they felt more compelled to stand on ceremony and all that kind of stuff. But with Harry, it was, they were, how do the young people say it? They were vibing. Yes, they were vibing. Okay. So, um, can you believe I just made myself a cup of coffee? <laughs> I just realized I needed it. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, so, Prince Harry. Oh, well, let me do the title first. We want you back. I did that already. So Prince Harry was greeted with enthusiasm and a round of applause from uh, young award winners at the Diana Legacy Award when he dialed in remotely from California. Do I have that? I think I do have it. I think I do have it. Hold on a second. Let me see if I have it. I wasn't going to show it, but... I mean, I guess not everybody has seen it, right? So let me see. I'm guessing not everybody has seen it. Hmm. Nope, that's not it. Is it? No, nope, that's not it. Okay. Hmm. I know you're probably saying, Baron, you're killing me. <laughs> Oh, man. Let me see. Videos. Oh, you know what? I'm looking right at the darn thing. I mean, just looking straight at it. If it was a snake, it I would be gone right now. I was literally looking right at it. 
We're not going to watch the whole thing. I just want you to see how excited they were when uh, he popped in. Okay. And then could I be right? Do I have a message from Her Majesty? I'm going to have to check that out. Okay. So there's that. Nope. Don't need that. Okay. Okay. Here goes. Here goes. That's the money. Uh, I'm Sophia from London. We really miss you here. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Um, I am the founder of an organisation called the 93% Club, and I'm working to make sure that outcomes for state educated people in the country are just as good as they are for privately educated people. Um, I'm sorry I can't. I'm sorry I can't be there. I wish I could be there with you guys. Sorry, right, carry on. Now, I'm going to go ahead and skip to the end because it's about five minutes long. And I just want you to hear the little banter after Harry uh, signed out. Too much trouble if, the, if, <laughs> if you're continuing to go on. And thank you very much for inspiring so many others and, and at the same time protecting uh, my mother's legacy. I really appreciate that. And Tessie, again, well done on this fantastic group of individuals. Um, I'm just so happy that you've had such an amazing week and an amazing night. Thank you. Incredible. His answer about realistness. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. What an inspiring guy, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? One more time. Yeah. Yeah. He, he is incredible. His answer about realistness. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. What an inspiring guy, honestly. Yeah. What an inspiring guy. Do you see how like excited they were to see him? So uh, but that's our Harry, quite the motivator. The enthusiastic fans could not contain their excitement as Prince Harry appeared on screen via video link at the Diana Legacy Awards on May of, uh, March 14th to congratulate the winners. The Duke dialed in from his home in Montecito. Let me see. They, they don't mention the price. I'm surprised. They don't even mention the price. Now that is progress. All right. Well done, Harry. Well done, you. Okay. We'll get to that in just a second. Let me go here. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I got you, Your Majesty. All right. And who knows? Easter's coming. We might see her again. <clears throat> Royal message. Okay, here goes. I, Queen Elizabeth II, ruler of the United Kingdom and the missing Duchess <laughs> and the, mix, the missing persons task force. Do hereby declare that I will not be at the trooping of the guards. And you all know why. Queen out. <laughs> Your Majesty, the Missing Persons Task Force. That's right. The missing, the missing Persons Task Force. And by the way, 1992 is a year that I shan't look back upon with undiluted pleasure. 
but it's not worse than 2024. Queen out. <laughs> See that? You never know how much you miss a person until she dials in from the great beyond. God, I hope Harry and Megan are not watching. But uh, <laughs> I hope they're not watching. How could I ever explain this in Montecito, huh? Not that I would probably ever, ever get invited to Montecito, but how would I ever explain that? <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. B. Martin says, Jeremy Vine also said, let's call a truth. Uh, is it truce? Uh, truce? A truth. Call it truth. Truce. Okay. Thank you, B. Martin. Uh, let me see. Harry has a job and family responsibilities, and he is a hands on dad. Absolutely. Uh, oh, very good. Very good. Glad to hear that. Um, okay. Oh, and B. Martin says the prince was not even there, but a video call. Irrelevant, I say not uh, burn, baby, burn. <laughs> burn, baby, burn. Thank you very much for the super chat. All right. And there we go. So Pierce Morgan has heard alarming things as he claims Prince William is covering something up. Pierce Morgan thinks Prince William is trying to cover something up regarding his wife, Kate Middleton, as American media outlets make allegations about the state of the couple's marriage. Well, you know what? They should be glad that that's the only thing they're making allegations about and not the health and well-being of the Princess of Wales. Pierce Morgan accused Prince William of trying to cover something up as Kate continues to rumble on. Um, Morgan revealed on Wednesday night that he has been told some stuff, stressing that he doesn't know if it's true or not, uh, and is pretty. It's a pretty alarming uh, what's what is happening. If what he has been told about the royal family is to be believed, Morgan also shockingly agreed with a claim coming from Prince Harry and Prince. Uh, I'm sorry, and uh, Meghan Markle's camp regarding the drama, a first for the longtime critic of the couple. Agree with what coming from their camp? What is supposed to be coming from their camp? That's what I want to know. And whatever it is, does it have anything to do with Harry and Meghan? Because they keep saying that they're hearing stuff from Harry and Meghan but or from people close to them. But one thing we know for sure is that there are no leaks in Montecito. So where are you all getting this information from about what Harry and Meghan thinks or what they said? They keep trying to pull them into this drama. It has nothing to do with them. Okay. And where was I? Okay, so the whereabouts of Kate Middleton is still a hot topic across the world, following Kensington Palace having to admit a snap shared across Will and Kate's social media channel on Mother's Day had been edited. Speaking on his YouTube channel, and see, that's the important thing you have to remember. Pierce Morgan, just like... Um, Dan Wooten. Pierce Morgan is on YouTube. Dan Wooten is trying to get attention for his channel on YouTube. Of course, they're going to say that they know something or they heard something because they want to build up enough interest in their new channels, in their new you know, shows or whatever. But the truth is, I don't think that, um, I mean, Pierce Morgan, if 
if he can tap a phone, if he could hack a phone, then I would say, yeah, if he still has the ability to hack a phone, then he might know something. But absent his superpower, and that is phone hacking, what does he know? Uh, let me see here. Morgan then asks, uh, why is uh, Princess Catherine, who is recovering from abdominal surgery, spending time hunched over, Photoshop? Uh, that's silly. Then introduce, okay, introduce some uh, guests. Half of it is true. It's pretty alarming. So he didn't really have nothing to say. I don't believe that he knows anything. Um, if he knew something, then I think he would just blurt it out like he's done before in the past, right? But right now, I would say I I, I don't believe him. I don't believe him. Although um, somebody knows something. but. Uh, do I believe him? Because he's a big mouth. He would just say it. If he knew it, he would just say it. Unless he's trying to wait to the most opportune moment to do it. That's a possibility. But there's a lot of rumors out there. But who would know what's true? I mean, if Kate's own people can't talk to her, what are the chances that... Um, you know, that Pierce Morgan would know something. So I don't know. Uh, v. Bram, thank you so much for the super sticker. And as always, thanks for watching Royal Sussex. Yeah, I'm not sure what to think about that. Uh, we're on a freedom flight. Remember that? We are on a freedom flight. Yes, we are a freedom flight. Now, from what I hear, the launch of the... Luxury brand happened to be on the same day as the Freedom Flight. Did you guys hear that? <clears throat> that the launch of the Luxury blur a brand was the same day as the Freedom Flight, which does kind of make sense because they were in Canada and then they relocated to California before the borders closed. And before that, they were, let me see. So they were in Canada from like Christmas, right? They spent Christmas in Canada. Harry came back and then they both came back for, you know, their last round of duty. And then they were off to Canada for good. Well, supposedly for good. And then by March of 2020, that was so long ago, I can barely remember I think that's when they were headed to Tyler Perry's house. So I think that's the right order of things. So, yeah, it could have very well been because it is still March. And, you know, sometimes the Sussexes like to do things on dates that are significant to them. So I'm going to say, yes, it probably was. I mean, I suppose I could look up the information, but... Uh, I don't remember when they made that trip, but that would be interesting if that is the case. Freedom Flight and, of course, the um, the new presence on Instagram. So maybe it does jive. Uh-oh. Uh, let's see. Got another message. Let me see here. <laughs> uh, royal message. Not only, <laughs> wait, <clears throat> not only that, in my years, I've never seen or heard of a missing Duchess Sherlock Holmes is right. Here pulling his hair out. <laughs> you, you can't, wait, <clears throat> you can't make this up. Is it? I gotta stop laughing. Wait. <clears throat> Is it me? Did she ever exist? Inquiring queens want to know. Queen out. <laughs> uh, I could just imagine the queen saying that. I could just imagine her like like stumping through the house. 
I've, <laughs> not only that, in all my years, I've never seen or heard of a missing duchess. Sherlock Holmes is right here pulling his hair out. You can't make this up. <laughs> is it me? Did she ever exist? Inquiring queens want to know. <laughs> uh, I'm getting pretty good with my uh, Queen Elizabeth impersonation. Okay, thank you very much, Your Majesty, and thank you, Sean, for communicating to the great beyond, to the um, the original uh, QE2 from the great beyond. And B. Martim says, Baron, Pierce Morgan has to try to survive on YouTube uh, his last hope. That is true because he has really hit rock bottom. And I looked at him today and he just looked exhausted. He looked exhausted like he doesn't sleep. He really, really looked deflated. I did not see that arrogance or cockiness. So if he is holding on to something that he needs to uh, help that channel survive, all I can say is he he had better he had better beat Dan Wooten to it because you know Dan Wooten um, he may actually come out with it first. I just don't think either one of them know anything because if they knew something, it would be such a coup for them to be the first to mention it on their channels. Just like when Pierce Morgan told who was the racist, that was the most views he ever had, I think. That and what is his name? Christiana, Chris, Cristiano, whatever his name is. Yeah, I think that was his biggest show. But thank you very much, B. Martin. But yeah, that's the only hand he has to play. Okay, and then, of course, we already um, talked about the numbers, so I can move on. And you guys, I got to ask you a question. Do you think that, um, do you think that there is a subtle message in the lyrics to that song that accompanied the video? Now, I cannot play the song, but if you watch that little short video, uh, which I think was on the stories, meaning that it was temporary to the Instagram. And I do believe it's gone now. But if you watch that video, you know that the song was from Nancy Wilson, right? Um, I wish you the best, I think is the name of it. Anyway, um, I wish you bluebirds in the spring to give your heart a song to sing. And then a kiss, but more than this, I wish you love. <laughs> and in July, a lemonade to cool you on some leafy glade, to wish you health and more than wealth, I wish you love. Now, do you think she's sending a message to someone? My breaking heart and I agree that you and I could never be. <laughs> So I wish you the best, my very best. I set you free. <laughs> I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say who I think this is referring to. It may even be for multiple people, but I feel like there's a little bit of something to that. <laughs> I think somebody's sending a message. And it was someone had a um a video and they were just like they you know they were just saying that Megan was was you know, being very classy but at the same time sending a message. I wish you shelter from the storm, a cozy fire to keep you warm, but most of all when snowflakes fall, I wish you love. My breaking heart and I agree that you and I could never be. So with my best, my very best, I set you free. 
I wish you shelter from a storm, a cozy fire to keep you warm. But most of all, when snowflakes falls, I wish you love. But most of all, when snowflakes fall, I wish you love. <laughs> Y'all listen, let's not go there because we, it's just a pretty song. It's just a pretty song. And I'm sure that there was nothing to that except just a pretty song. <laughs> However, when I saw that video, I thought it necessary to download the lyrics to share with you. Um, by the way, I love Nancy Wilson. Uh, yes, Baron, she was saying, I am free to the royal family. Nancy Wilson recorded that song in Japan when the U.S. Uh, recording contract was shady. Oh, okay. Come KB Martin, thank you so much with the uh, uh, music facts. I wish you bluebirds in the spring. I give your heart a song to sing. And then a kiss, but more than this, I wish you love. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Woo! I love it. I love it. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Oh, you think my um, I um, I'm betraying myself uh with my little sinister laugh, that wicked laugh. Yeah, my wicked laugh is bad as can be. And all the lyrics that I see. <laughs> I'm not being shady. I wish you love. <laughs> Wait, I love the way the album cover, Nancy Wilson just got her head back like, huh. <laughs> Nancy Wilson even looking at us like you could believe that if you want to. You can believe it if you want to. Uh, TBTB is uh, a beautiful life says, did you hear KP has been deemed an unreliable source by Associated Press? The same that uh, sent the kill notice. Uh, now they are on the list with North Korea and Iran. Yes, I did hear that. Thank you so much for the super chat. Yes, they have deemed them unreliable. Um, well, I showed you guys that photo. Was it yesterday? Did I share that photo yesterday? Let me take a look. Um, let me take a look at yesterday. Because I had one yesterday that seemed to be problematic. Hmm. Was that yesterday? Okay, maybe it wasn't yesterday. But there was one photo of Kate that was released. And it was the mirror that uploaded the photo. And then they took it down. Because even though it was an old photo... The problem with the photo is the fact that it um, it had been heavily photoshopped. It had been heavily photoshopped. And I guess realizing it, I think it was only up for like six minutes. I repeat, maybe six minutes. And a lot of people saw it. I saw it. And um, I took a screenshot of it. And then when I went back, it was gone. It had vanished. And I think they, this one, okay, this one right here. So as a squatty, I, remember, I, I always tell you, if something looks shady, screenshot it. 
do it fast before they take it down. So I was literally sitting here at the PC and this popped up on my Twitter, right? Kate heartwarming. Not, and I didn't even click on that blue link right there because I wanted to hurry up and share it with some people in spaces. And then I did a Google search on the photo and found out that photo was about 10 years old. But one of the people in spaces um, zoomed in and you could see the very obvious Photoshop. And so I think that they are going to be very careful, even if it's an old story. I think that a lot of these uh, news groups are going to be very careful before they upload photos from Kensington Palace. It's just, she looks very, very strange, as though she's not actually sitting in that chair. You see that? It doesn't seem like she's sitting in the chair. The shadow, the lines, something is just not right. Yeah, and the, the two doorknobs, um, that looks strange as well. But yeah, it's it, it seems like a, a cut and paste or whatever, but it just looks strange. So they took it down within, I'm going to say, six to ten minutes it was gone. Yep. All of a sudden they did not want to leave this photo up. So they have been manipulating a lot of things and the media outlets have just been taking their word for it. They haven't really given it any scrutiny, but that photo from the other day was so bad. I kept saying, this is bad. This is bad. And it is, it was really bad. I love that furniture that Nancy Wilson is sitting on. You see that? Um, I guess it's like a, a little settee or sofa, little whatever it is. But that is very cool. Very mod for the 1960 mod, as in modern furniture movement. Mod, modern everything. They used to call it mod because it was modern. But uh, yeah, that's really cool. Great colors. Even got a little purple highlight in her hair. Uh, the two-term uh, chair. Uh, yeah. Let me see here. Yeah. She's not even sitting in that chair. Very strange. At least it doesn't look like she's sitting in the chair. They did something to it. Now, uh, as before mentioned, I think it was... Um, our beloved VS Speaks Royally said that there was some uh, fake accounts. Well, uh, first of all, the newspaper, Megan turns to jam for some extra bread. I thought that was cute. But you see where there's a red box there? If you all have not signed up to the uh, American Riviera Orchard, be careful. Because one of those fake sites, they actually have a product list. They're actually trying to sell merchandise. And a lot of the squaddies have been reporting those sites. So if you encounter that site, or should I say any of those fake sites, as you can see, they're using the same profile pictures. They're using the same variation of the name, right? They're doing everything they can because, trust me, until today or yesterday, nobody had ever heard of American Riviera Orchard. That orchard at the end, that makes it very singular and unique. So very different. Now, people for a long time has referred to that area of California as the American Riviera. So that's nothing new. But American Riviera Orchard that makes it unique. So anybody who has created one of those fake sites have literally gone out of their way to make sure 
that they could try to hitch their wagon to our Duchess of Sussex's um, success so that they can monetize it for their own twisted purposes. So report, report, report. If you see anything that looks suspect, report it because they're up to no good. I wish I could zoom into that so you can see some of them up close, but um, I probably should have broke that in half so you can see that. But anyway, you, you get the point. So, and plus, Megan's account has a blue check mark. The other ones do not have a blue check mark. So remember that Megan's has a blue check mark. But don't just rely upon that check mark. Megan's is the one that will have the most possible subscribers. And that is over, what is it, 436,000? That's another way you can tell. Over 400,000, that's Megan's. The other ones, wannabes. Shame we have to do this, but that's such as the world we live in, right? Uh-oh, there we go. Prince Harry honors the Diana Award legacy uh, recipients. Uh, this event, uh, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, uh, met with the year's cohort of legacy award recipient from the Diana Award founded in honor of his mother, Princess Diana. The award celebrates outstanding individuals from across the globe who are changing the world and leaving a lasting impression, a legacy that is uh, of social impact. The program offers a range of initiatives designed to unlock recipients' potential, inspire action, and create opportunities, ensuring that no young person is left out or left behind. Taking place every two years, the Legacy Awards are the most esteemed honors, offering an awards uh, bespoke personal and professional development support to enhance their social action work and help them mobilize others to do the same. Thank you very much for inspiring so many others and at the same time, protecting my mother's legacy. Very important. I really appreciate that. And Tessie, again, oh, well, we heard him say that, didn't? That's the same thing he said at the end on the video. I just realized that this year marks the 25 years of Diana Award charitable endeavor designed to further Princess Diana's belief that young people have the power to change the world. Hear, hear, change the world. And look at there. How cool is that? I mean, they are just ex so excited. They're just so excited. I love seeing that. I love, love, love seeing that. Very cool. And it's what Harry deserves. He works so hard. And take a look at the time. So Harry appeared around midnight. William... Well, he was on at 7.30. I believe William deliberately dragged the event so that Harry could go on so late that people would be angry and, and moody and tired and, you know what I'm saying? To be a little less than enthusiastic at Harry's appearance. However, you know what they say, the best laid plans, right? Uh, I'm Sophia from London. We really miss you here. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Um, I am the founder of an organization called the 93%. So, in contrast to the um, comments from the tabloid media, there was this one reporter, and she was like, I don't know how glad they were to see him. I mean, after all, it was after midnight before he even appeared. 
and blah, 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 blah. Um, do those young people seem as though they were upset or were they just giddy with joy to see Harry even remotely dialing in from Montecito where there are no leaks? They were incredibly enthusiastic. So if William was dragging around there hoping to steal Harry's thunder, guess what? It did not work. It did not work. Harry was no less appealing to that group of people at midnight than he would have been at 10 p.m., 11 p.m. It did not matter. They love Prince Harry. William, they tolerate. Harry, they adore. So nice try, though, Willie. Nice try. Plus, we know it. You can't hang around too long. We don't want anybody to go over to your property and find any secrets, do we? <laughs> you can't stay away too long because you don't want people to go over there and discover what you're hiding over at Amra Hall or over at, um, Nat uh, what is it, Adelaide Cottage. We don't want people discovering things, do we? Finding things just don't appear proper. Oh, oh, thanks for saying. I just uh, checked several of these uh, fake accounts and they have made their accounts private. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you very much. I hope that that means that they're not going to be in any trouble. Um, but yeah, the squatties, let me tell y'all something. The squatties was all over them like a cheap suit today. I mean, as soon as people heard about it, they were on it to go and, um, uh, what do you call it, to report those channels. What a crummy thing to do. Yeah, some people can be awful. Thank you so much, Karen, for that update. So, again, uh, great uh, meeting for Harry and all of the recipients. Cheers. And, well, for another two years before we have the next one. Uh, let me see. Are they trying to uh, play my prince? <laughs> right? Why are they trying to play my prince? Oh, thank you, B. Martin. Why are they trying to play him? Don't be trying to play him. Don't play a hate. Ooh, y'all. Ooh. I'm almost nervous to play this one. I'm almost nervous to play it. Somebody... Somebody um, gave Nana a piece of their mind. Now, I have to warn you, he went there. He really went there. Um, I don't know if y'all seen this, but let me tell you something. He went there. <laughs> a panic room. A panic room. I hope so. Yeah, maybe that's where she is. She's in the panic room and won't come out. You know they have enough uh, supplies there to last a long time. I wish you bluebirds in the spring. Um, okay. Once again, warning, he went there been told that I should go back to Africa and I should be deported. Free speech, supposedly. I was born in this country, but your viewers often tell me I should be deported. And I'm speaking directly to you, Nana, now. Not to GB News and not to Patrick. But no matter how many... Uh-oh. Oh, Lord. It just buffered. Let me try it again. Oh, let me try it again.
I hope this thing ain't gonna give me problems. It's always when I got something really good I wanna share that this happens. Come on, Twitter. Uh, nope, that's not the problem. Okay, let me try this one more time. Ah, come on, come on, come on. Well, you can see the caption up. To Africa, I should be deported. Free speech, supposedly. I was born in this country, but your viewers often tell me I should be deported. And I'm speaking directly to you, now, now, now. not to Oh, it keeps freezing. TV news and not to Patrick. But no matter how many, no matter how many wigs you wear, no matter how many um, oh, times you throw your fellow black women under the bus, as you did on the yeah. show the other day, you well, will never, you. just like myself, be more My than a talking monkey women. to a lot of these people. All right, listen, listen, listen. Right. before you, before you throw out. out before you throw away all those comments and tell me my fellow black women, I've never met any of these women. I don't know any of these women. I don't represent any community of people. I represent Nana a queer. I'll be judged by the content of my character, not the color of my skin, and definitely not by you. And as for being called names, I, I get called loads oh, of names. Let me finish you. because you've spent time talking and I've listened. But I, I, I am entitled to my opinion and my opinion is not based on the color of my skin. My opinion is based on my thoughts and views, and I listen to what I've been told, and I make a fair judgment given the information I have. I don't look at myself and say, I must follow these people because they are all the same color as me. I will not do that, and I will not do it, and I will not be told by someone like you that that's what I should be doing. I'm not a queer, and that's how I want to be seen. Okay. And they would as happily see you deported as they would see me deported, Nana. That's the who, truth. Who, who are they? No how much who are they? For them. Who are they? they who are the racists they? Racists who abuse me online every time I appear on this show. Well, the people who are racist. Well, it listen, doesn't happen I get black people abusing What does that tell you about the audience? Listen, listen, who news. are they? Who are they that would happily see As me? As I just said, it's the racists who abuse me every time I appear so on this show on Twitter. Call me a big nose. Say I'm a gorilla. I get called all sorts of names. You can be back to Africa. You are both shouting over each other now, and, and we're going to we are going to we are going to leave it there. Sorry, and I would just before I before I park it before I park it, I would just like to say, uh, absolutely condemn any racism that either of you have received, and also towards Diane Abbott as well. I hope that goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, also, I am going to give you an opportunity, Femi, just to quickly apologise to Nana about something you said about something to do with. Uh, how many wigs she might wear or anything. I mean, it was potentially quite personally offensive. You can come on the show and make points, political points or whatever. But I think when you, when you, when you do uh, attacks like that, would you like to withdraw that comment? Uh, I can withdraw the comment about the wig, but I won't withdraw the comment which says that people will constantly, they will happily see you deported okay. as they would see me deported. No matter how much you dance for these racists, right. they are not Ugh. going to see you as Pathetic. an equal, Nana. Pathetic. And I say You're that from a place racist. of love. You're All right, well, look, both racist. of you... Thank you very much. Obviously, we could have carried this on forever, but unfortunately, we're out of time. So uh, there we go. Right. Uh Been told that I. Well, um, he went there. You know, I think it's only polite that when somebody goes through so much trouble, you just pretend like it's their real hair. You know what I'm saying? I would, I probably couldn't stop looking at her, but I would never say anything to her about you know, that, that, that stuff that she's wearing that I would just pretend like I didn't see it. Um, anyway, there were reports from, uh, people in the adjoining flats from Nana's, uh, you know, home, uh, her neighbors said that Nana could be heard screaming into the night, uh, turning over tables and, uh, breaking glass, and they could even see from the street she was in the house running around abusing her wigs, and oh, it was such a, a, a awful sight. But um, 
Yeah, I I feel kind of bad for her. he shouldn't have went there, but he was uh, he was man enough to take it back to withdraw it. But um, by that time, the damage had been done. I mean, the damage to her character, not to her wigs, because I do believe that most of those wigs are indestructible. As a matter of fact, they are made from a space age polymer that has been used by NASA. So anything that, um, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, strong, anything that strong and resistant to breakage, fire, theft, <laughs> anything that powerful could only have been uh, created for NASA. So just think, there are certain fibers that are used in the uh, spacesuits that are worn by the astronauts. Some of those same fibers are used to create uh, those um, carbon fiber um, uh, 787 Dreamliners. They use that same carbon fiber. Anyway, it's a very, very powerful material. And, um, well, Nana's very fortunate to have access to it. <clears throat> especially if she's going to be swinging it around in the air like that. Uh, B. Martin says, uh, no, she didn't cite Martin Luther King and her wigs. <laughs> she got her taste for, uh, he, he said, deport her now. I mean, deport her. Uh, thank you very much, uh, B. Martin. Yeah, she went there. She decided to equate her love for uh, cheap wigs with that of, the civil rights movement and Martin Luther King. I don't know how you conflate those uh, two things, but uh, she managed to do it. She managed to somehow join her freedom to wear those ridiculous wigs with a civil rights leader. Only Nana could be so brazen to do such a thing. Uh, YM Joy says, hey, polyester has feelings too. Nana's <laughs> Thank you, YM Droid. It is a space age polymer. Let me tell you, there were scientists up at DuPont, uh, up the, the DuPont Chemical Company. There were scientists that were up late into the night trying to create that synthetic fiber. Uh, let me see, Blue Draws. Thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you so much for watching. Royal Sussex. I mean, I could just imagine her neighbors must have gotten such a fright. I mean, she's in there whipping that wig around and stomping it. And, and, I, and you know, I'm pretty sure that the wig could, could give it just as well as it could take it. <laughs> Let me see. Anne Gromley, thank you very much for the super sticker. And thank you for being here tonight. And, of course, thank you, Nana, for hours of entertainment. Without you, I don't know if I could ever uh, get through a segment like this, but whether it's the space-age polymer used to create those uh, funny wigs you wear or the very rare and precious metals used to create that gold eyeshadow or perhaps it's just a combination of those things, but whatever it is, Thanks for the memories. Thank you for being so entertaining. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> now, you guys. There are some very bitter, bitter people in this world. Bitter. Do you hear me? Bitter, bitter, bitter. Check it out. Kate and William are in crisis as never before. So how grimly predictable of Megan to come crashing in with this basic beige relaunch. And Maureen Callahan also known as the albino assassin, Maureen Callahan warns such trashy royalty for sale 
is exactly what the late queen always feared. Did she really? Is this the same queen that had her own brand of gin? Is this the same queen that um, had a gift shop at Windsor Castle that I visited myself and purchased a chocolate bar? Or perhaps it's the king who uh, has like, uh, what is it? That holistic organic food that they're forever chucking at the supermarkets. Charles has a whole product line. I think Charles even sells butter. Butter for very bitter people. Um, and of course, Sarah Ferguson. She has those books and, and biscuits and all that other kind of stuff. So what is the point? I don't get it. Everybody's got a little hustle somewhere. Wow. Uh, became a new member. Well, I know you already had a membership, but maybe you changed your payment plan or whatever. But thank you very much, Helene. And thank you for being a constant support to Royal Sussex. Okay. So, uh, and of course, they are mocking her for the beige palette that um, she has used so, you know, efficiently, so so beautifully. Uh, Megan has done more with beige than most people I know. So I don't see any reason to uh, make comment about it. And then, of course, there's this, the timing is no accident. Megan launches lifestyle brand that will see her flogging jams and kitchenware minutes before Prince William speaks at Diana Memorial. Then Sussex is revealed $100,000 Archwell Prize um, while Prince of Wales is at uh, event. I didn't notice because I didn't notice that William was speaking. As a matter of fact, did anybody pay attention? Why are they trying to insinuate that Harry and Meghan pulled attention away from one of the most boring people in the world? How can Harry and Meghan pull attention away from one of the most boring people ever to draw a breath? How is that possible? Even some of the um, body language experts that work for the tabloids were saying that William was very stiff and Harry was very animated and, and, and lovable. And there he is greeting them with his elbows on the table. It was like two different events. So don't blame the Sussexes. Megan shows no respect for the monarchy and those in it by launching her jam and tablecloth stalls when Princess Diana's memorial award charity, the late queen saw it coming. Has Harry had to say? Does she want to come to the UK purely for selling her goods? And it wouldn't be complete without Angela that, 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 that Levin. I mean to tell you, Angela Levin, and let me let me show you something. Because I don't know who she was getting all sassy for, but let me show you what this this old thing did. What's, what's up with them lips? What's up with them lips? Is she still got a crush on Harry? Please tell me what's going on with those lips. Is she trying to... <laughs> is she trying to send a message to somebody? I mean, I know it's Friday, but maybe she had a date afterwards. But those lips, 
those lips. I think that's just disgusting for somebody her age. That is disgusting. Yeah, that's better. That's better. I had to freeze it right there. I think it's disgusting. I mean, at her age, I think that's just a bit loud. And then to wear something as bright red as that, I think it's very tacky. It is tacky. Do you hear me? Tacky. It is absolutely tacky. Uh, let me see. Bear. <laughs> Looks like not alone to one of her short wigs. <laughs> you know what? I just noticed that. I couldn't see it before because I was too busy looking at them soup coolers. Look at there. I was so busy looking at those soup coolers, I didn't notice her hair. But you're right. Looked like Nana chopped down one of them uh, party hats and gave it to her. Thank you again for the super chat. I mean, that's just disgusting. That is disgusting. She's too old to, to wear all that lipstick. And, and and I don't know if Harry has to say because, uh, well, well, Megan, you know, she's a Hollywood actress and she always get what she wants. And I'm not sure that Harry could say anything. And, and if he did say something, she would probably, um, she would get cross with him. And, and so he knows that he can't say anything. That's what she was on TV saying today. Ugh, that's disgusting. She ought to, ugh. She ought to be um, shamed of herself running around like somebody's interested in her, like she's about to scoop somebody. Baron, the uh, first picture, <laughs> go back. <laughs> this one. <laughs> uh, if you mean this one right here. I mean, look at that wig looks like it flew off of... Like somebody was in a uh, convertible open top car. It looked like that wig flew off of somebody's head and just got run over by a couple of lorries. And then somebody found it and saw her name on the tag inside of it. And then, of course, mailed it back to the studio. And she didn't even wash it. She just put it on. She didn't even wash it. She just put it on. Oh, I bet you it's like a whole, a whole like a uh, new species of 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 insect in that wig. Uh, William Joy says, uh, starting to think Kate went missing because, uh, because you see, uh, brought all the shiny wigs. <laughs> you see who brought all the shiny wigs in the UK, leaving Nana and uh, Angela with uh, the the straw ones. The short ones. It was, wait. Uh, okay, got you. Thank you very much. The straw wigs. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. But yeah, um, I don't. I don't know who she had the hotspot, but ooh, she. She. It must be somebody at the studio. Maybe a nice. Um, janitor or something that she got the hots for and look at her sending signals Mwah. 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 let me see b martin says uh baron she needs afro like uh afro annie newports <laughs> but she said no I, I can't cut you short thank you again Speaking of Afro Annie, I got something for her coming up later. Oh, yeah, the troll doll. Where is she, the troll doll? Where is that troll? There she is. Even, the tr even her doll has bad hair. And... She is prone to lying. Big liar. Dr. Shola says, haters are losing their godforsaken minds at Meghan Markle 
new venture, uh, American Riviera Orchard, and I'm here for it. Imagine saying launch is disrespectful to Princess Diana Awards uh, and and cashing in on William and Kate's self-inflicted crisis is painting the haters, and I love it. And it is. They're, they're in full panic mode. They don't know what to do with themselves. I mean, she's so upset. She looked like she just grew another neck. That's how she's upset she is. That is how upset she is. And, you know, even more troubling is because Kate is away for whatever reason. So they don't have that comparison to make. So now every time Harry and Meghan do something, it's being disrespectful. They don't want them to do anything that looks like they're living their best lives. They want Meghan to come out and speak on behalf of Kate because Meghan, what kind of feminist is she if she don't speak up for the person who um, possibly participated in abusing Meghan? And even worse, is the one who benefited from that abuse, in my opinion. And then Daily Mail actually took the time to itemize everything in the Sussex kitchen. I do not have that list to share. I just wanted to show you the picture to let you know somebody went completely through every pot and pan and utensil that they could identify and even numbered them so you could buy them too. But I bet you that they had links so that Daily Mail could make money from it. Uh, let me see. Kate could be dead. Is a is venomous a uh, new low for washed up clown John Oliver and accused <laughs> the accused nose candy daddy Andy Cohen. Does this give you any clue of how angry they are? Look at the language that they're using. Washed up clown and bacon soda daddy Andy Cohen. Can you believe the language? Why are they so angry? Why are they so angry? What is it about Megan and Harry's happiness that triggers them so terribly much? What is it about their happiness that triggers them? These are the kind of headlines. Where is it? These are the kind of headlines that they've been sharing. Megan's Beige Relaunch, Cooking Up a Storm. And of course, oh, there we go. Um, what is that? Golf, 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 uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Golf, that came. <laughs> is that one of those, um, is that one of those um, Middleton words? Gaffa waffing, gaffa waffle, a waffle I don't know what that word. <laughs> How do you say that word? Gaffa waffle. Is that like that old English or something, or that Middle Earth English? I've never seen that word before in my life. Oh well. Uh, go gophering, gophering, guffering, goofering, goofering. That is weird. Boy, I tell you, they just make up words. Gofa, gofa, pronounced gofawing. What the heck does that mean? Oh, well, um, well, I haven't heard any blowback from George Galloway's uh, rant. Somebody told me that you shouldn't say rant. It was a uh, rant. It was a speech. I don't think saying rant is a has a negative cognitation to it. 
When somebody rants, that means that they have said something very strongly, right? I don't think there's anything wrong with the word uh, rant, but um, recollections may vary. What have they done with our loved ones' bodies? We're still trying to figure that out. Oh, here's another little sound bite for you guys. Since I started talking about Kate Middleton, I've received like pretty much just one type of criticism, which always comes in the form of you are invading someone's privacy. Please respect the privacy of the royal family at this time. This is a highly personal matter, and it is super invasive to speculate about what's going on with Kate Middleton. And I just have a question for those people. Are we talking about the same royal family? Because the royal family I know parades their women Lion King style to show their newborns before the umbilical cord has even been cut. The royal family I know is a vestigial body part for an England that no longer exists and serves no actual function anymore other than to nurture the ongoing parasocial relationship between white people and the project of colonialism. I've talked at length on my page about how it's super important for us to distinguish the difference between public figures and individuals when we're deciding who we should be talking about, also to distinguish the difference between an individual and a brand. And the royal family goes beyond all of that. The royal family isn't just a set of figureheads. It is not just a brand. The royal family are celebrity bobbleheads. Their whole purpose in life is to keep you engaged with them on an intimate level, is to keep you interested in Kate and the kids and William, because if you were ever to stop being interested in them, their value would cease to exist. That is the only value that they provide, quote unquote provide, for the country of England, is that they generate interest. And it's interesting to me how even like the pseudo-feminist argument falls apart when you talk about the royal family, where people are like, oh, we talk about women more than men, like blah, 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 even though that is an argument that I've said before, like I fundamentally disagree with. The conversations we have around men are the air we breathe, but that's another point. We talk about the men in the royal family till our noses bleed. Pete Middleton has been existing in the shadows for decades now. That People are noticing that a highly famous woman in a notoriously dangerous public family is basically missing is not an act of public invasion. Which brings me to one other argument I've seen, which is, oh, let's not do to Kate what we did to Diana. I'm going to stop you right there. The public did not kill Diana. The public did not push Meghan Markle out of the royal family. If you think that the public are responsible for what... Oh, there you go. There you go. <clears throat> Um, uh, coffee. <laughs> yep, just coffee. Okay. So Kate Middleton's senior staffers haven't seen or spoken to her, a source tells us weekly. Now that is concerning. Kate is repeatedly covered in a shroud of secrecy and is causing concern and confusion in Kensington Palace. Y'all, I would love to say that I'm, I feel, I feel that I'm committed to one theory or the other, but that's all they are, theories. I just don't know what to think is going on with her. Um, and it's really sad that people are even wondering if she's still alive. Um, was the Spanish media right? Where is Kate Middleton? It's been over 80 days, over 80 days. Uh, let me see. While rumors swirl about the future queen's health, uh, she finally starting to reveal the truth about the inner circle, why she's in hiding. Yeah, it seems like she's in hiding. I don't know. I don't know if it's true that even her closest inner circle 
has not seen her. I'm sure that includes her mom. Then that's concerning. But uh, the Middletons have voices. If they know something, say something. Ooh, I hear you, Adrian Burrow. I hear you. Uh, this story isn't going anywhere. We're still none the wiser. And every day that goes by without confirming, uh, uh, confirmation, that is, of her welfare, they allow the narrative to be shaped by others. Yeah. And that's, that's what it comes down to. As long as they say nothing, then we're just going to fill in the blanks. And they may not like what we're filling the blanks with. And right here, this curious gathering of people. Um, anybody that sits in the same room and casually has a, I don't know, cocktail or meeting, whatever, uh, with the likes of um, Camilla Tomini and Angela Levin and Hoghead Piers Morgan. Oh, and let us not forget uh, Rebecca English over there on the far left side. Ugh. Ugh. Rebecca English. Uh, oh, you published a brazen lie. I expect an apology and retraction. Well, who he's speaking to is Matt Wilkinson. Um, yeah, when what day was that he posted? I don't see the actual day, but he fed into that lie too. This is a mistake Megan would even make. Uh, I'm sorry. This is a this isn't a mistake Megan uh, would ever make. A jive at, at Kate as a snapper pal. Blah blah blah. Editing the couple's official pregnancy photo. Again, if you want something to sell or if you want something to get noticed, throw Harry and Megan into the story. Or if you want to distract from the other royals, Harry and Megan. Oh, is that that tree? Uh, does my eyes deceive me? Is that that tree again? You know, the same tree that was here and here? Yes, that is the same tree. One of their favorite trees. But remember, that tree doesn't exist. That tree was made up and placed there by, um, you know, um, Misan Harriman. That tree doesn't exist. That was Photoshop, right? And, of course, the Sussexes, they just Photoshop it into every picture they ever take. Okay. If they think Kate's disappearance is going to increase her popularity, if that is the game uh, she is playing and she only had a facelift, her and Willie Leakes are finished. Yes, indeed. If that is the case, they're done. Oh, yeah, this is when those kids um, said, I have a picture of you and your family. And the king of the Netherlands said, um, what did he say? Oh, yeah, he said, oh, do you? He said, well, just so you know, we don't um, Photoshop. Oh, my God, that was funny. That was too funny. Don't worry. We don't Photoshop. Uh, let me see. Jenny Rock Bailey, Baron, thanks for giving us the real news about these fake royals. You are quite welcome. And Thank you so much for the super chat. And as always, thank you for watching Royal Sussex. Happy Friday or Saturday to you. Oh, there we go. Now, there you go. The Mount Rushmore of the Dutch royal family, the House of Orange. 
the House of Orange. I kind of like this photo. It's very artsy. Very cool. But, um, okay, let me go on to the next one. And, of course, Willie Leaks looks like, um, what was that song? Make it one for my baby and, and one more for the road. He looks like he's going to start swaying any minute now. Speaking of Willie Leaks, where is that at? Did you guys see this? This crusty appearance in his scalp? Do you think maybe they put makeup on there just to cover up the number 666? <laughs> Do you think the sign of the beast may be in his hairline somewhere? Yeah, I think that um, I think beneath that, that crusty, let me, let's see, aging like milk because he He's filled, well, full of it, full, of, well, filled with hate and rage. Yeah. I know. What is that crusty? But wait, y'all. Wait, wait, wait for it. Um, somebody who does 3D graphics decided to share their theory with you. Uh, Richard Perry, he shared his theory about Kate's wave, uh, well, Kate being in the car with Willie. If you notice, from the opposite side of the street, it appears to be just any couple riding down the street. But upon closer inspection, if you were able to create a 3D model, you will notice that the only person in the back seat of that car is William. The rest of it is some type of a mechanical contraption that is designed to wave constantly the only thing it doesn't do is laugh and throw his head back and, and have the mouth askew, but it will wave. It will wave. So thank you, uh, Richard Perry. And I think if you have any 3D needs, this person is able to help. And like right here, this is another 3D. It was rotating 360 degrees around and around. But again, it shows how royals can pretend to be home when there's nobody there. They just, you know, kind of wave. Yeah. Two sheets to the wind or, or three sheets. Now, why are these kids holding their nose? Why are these kids holding their nose? It was interesting when it was one child, and now that there's two, it makes me wonder, why are they holding their noses? I don't know. Why are those kids holding their noses? That's the way you hold your nose when you walk through a casino because of all the booze and cigarette smokes. But why are those kids Holding their nose. Very interesting. How Harry and Meghan perfectly timed PR Blitz torpedoed William's emotional tribute to Diana. Duchess unveiled TIG 2.0 American Riviera Orchard just as William took the stage. You all listen. I was on the computer live when that happened. And trust me when I say it, it was a very slow rollout. Very slow. And nobody needed to be the wiser until the newspapers, the media pointed it out. And that took a while because first of all, you have to figure out if it's a legitimate account. So whatever they're saying is not true. It's made up. It is totally made up. Uh, you think so? Yeah, makes you wonder. But then again, maybe he's just not bathing the way he should. You know, all that funk going through the pores. Very weird, though. 
Now, um, Princess Anne appeared to have broken royal protocol and refused to curtsy to her sister-in-law, Queen Camilla, during the annual Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey. Do you all really think that Afro Annie forgot the curtsy? How about this? Afro Annie refused to curtsy. Anne is not ever going to do it. She might wear, you know, um, a tiara or she might um, host, uh, well, not host, but she might be one of the people at a state dinner or something like that. But she's not ever going to publicly curtsy to that viper. Uh, J. Matt says, he stinks. Just say it, Baron. <laughs> curtsy, I mean, crusty scalp. You know, it is possible that he got some really bad B.O. Because Harry said that in his book. Harry said that on William's wedding, wedding day, that William um, reeked of alcohol. That he could smell it very strongly. That William was toe up from the flow up. So, but thank you very much, uh, J. Matt, for the super sticker. And thank you for being here. But if you take a look at these other um, boxes, Princess of Wales refused to curtsy to Queen Camilla during anger over coronation invitations. Or I think this may be uh, an article from the same time. The Princess of Wales apparently refused to curtsy to Queen Camilla at the uh, coronation. And lastly, uh, Kate Middleton curtsies to Charles after, I'm sorry, curtsies to King Charles after reportedly refusing to bow for Queen Camilla. Y'all, they are sending her a message. They are sending her a message. And I don't know that there's anything that they could do about it. Anything. It is what it is. I told you there seemed to be a bit of a war. I mean, look at there. They have never been so close. Matter of fact, I don't think they've ever been <laughs> anything to each other. When they think people are looking, then they'll do that you know, move their lips in each other's directions. But when nobody's looking, Kate's ready to head for the hills. And Camilla, well, we all know what Camilla is ready to do. What is Camilla best capable? Or should I say, what is she best known for? Hello, Senior Royal here. Hello. Hello, Senior Royal here. Well, I must tell you about what's happening with Catherine. Hello, Senior Royal here. Yeah, there you go. Hello, Senior Royal here. Oh, check it out. Kensington Palace can no longer be trusted. Just like North Korea. Well, I tell you what. I tell you what. Um, that If that happens, that will be the first uh, trip that they've taken since, since the Caribbean tour. But I tell you, if that is the case, um, he probably won't be able to wear... Um, oh, never mind. But yeah, so news agency boss uh, says manipulation of royal photo that uh, led to kill notice is type of trick pulled by pariah regimes. Pariah regimes. So there goes Kim Jong William. Kim Jong William. Yep, Kim Jong William. And listen, if he was a dictator, you know what he would do with his missiles, right? Just think, if he was a dictator, what would he do with his missiles? Let me give you a guess. 
Okay. Let me give you a guess. That's where he'd probably stick his missiles. Some place where they would be very hard to find. And yet enjoyable. <laughs> you know, I'm something of an American Riviera orchard girl myself. You see there, live and let live. If Willem Dafoe uh, feels like an American Riviera orchard girl, who amongst us does not? So it just goes to show that um, even esteemed actors like Willem Dafoe can't wait to shop at the um, online. <laughs> hmm. And these are some photos. Do you know, y'all know Daily Mail ran these photos? They are trying to make so much money off the Sussexes that they went on somebody's uh, Twitter account and stole these photos. That's why you have to be very careful because I do believe, I do believe that the Daily Mail, they watch all of these channels every day. They watch all of social media every day. Yep, got to be careful because they watching. Whatever we talk about, whatever we doing, I mean, you, they already covered this event before. Why would they add more pictures just because they were made available? And there was like, what, three photos? They decided to run those three photos for no good reason. Just mentioning that Megan was in. Now, mind you, I love the, um, what do you call it? The uh, publicity, the free publicity. But still, I mean, come on, they're only doing this because they saw three new photos and just decided to tell the same story about the same photos. That's all they did. Nothing has changed. The same occasion. And here's the other ones. Yeah, for some reason, these did not come out earlier this month, but it's very cool to see them. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mod Squad, for keeping us a safe space. Church Nelly, Lydia Washington, Cookies and Cream, Adrian Burroughs, uh, Dominica, Anastasia Isabella Christiansen, Black Queen, Lucy Wynn, uh, Elaine Parker, and VS Speaks Royally. Thanks again for keeping us a safe space. And also, thank you all for your participation, whether you only commented or perhaps made a donation or even hit that like button. Whatever comes next, please do it so that we can keep bringing you Royal Sussex every day. Okay? All right. And with that, you guys, remember, when you see our queens, uh-oh, where's the queens at? <laughs> I think I didn't put them up there. That's okay. When you see our queens, it is time to go. And you know what I mean? Ha! Good night, Annie Bullard. Let me see. How long have I been on? Two hours, 15 minutes? I really pushed through, didn't I? I had all those slides. But don't worry about those haters because they are... Bitter. And, you know, somebody needs to say it. Bitter. <laughs> Bitter, bitter, bitter. Yeah, they are just bitter. Bitter, bitter, bitter. Oh. Ain't nobody got time for that. And ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for no bitterness. Okay. All right, then. We are good. Um, our last word for the day is... Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. 
So that's our last word of the day. So I'm going to uh, cue the Ginger Avenger. Love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching Royal Sussex.